Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship here at Richmond Presbyterian Church. I'm Victor Kim, the lead minister here at RPC, and I want to welcome you wherever you may be as we worship God together and as we spend some time afterwards in fellowship. Friends, today we celebrate the 61st anniversary of Richmond Presbyterian Church. We give thanks to God for God's goodness to us and for the ministry of RPC in this community for all these many, many years. And so we celebrate this day with one another, with you, and we give glory to God on this anniversary Sunday. I just want a, a brief thanks to all those who have been helping out with this anniversary Sunday, things like the ice cream drive through the games trivia night last night for the newsletter that was uh, published for the videos that have been put on um, our, our YouTube and Facebook. For everyone involved with this anniversary weekend, thank you so much for all that you've contributed. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the, uh, the RPC service from back in June of 1986 with the Reverend Dr. Tony Plomp and many, many people in the old congregation. If you haven't watched it yet, it's still available on our YouTube and Facebook channels, and I just want to invite you to go and check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, just wanna, I want to just make this quick announcement that one of our longtime members, as we celebrate 61 years, one of our longtime members here at RPC churns 95 tomorrow. And so, happy birthday, Pat McKendrick. Happy 95th birthday. God bless you. Many more years to come. Friends, watch the announcements, and then let's get ready to worship God as we sing our gathering song, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Friends, will you join me in our call to worship? Holy are you, source and creator of all things. We bring you our praise for your gift of life. Holy are you, son and redeemer of all things. We bring you our thanks for your gift of new life. Holy are you, spirit and sustainer of all things. We come to bear witness to your truth and worship your holy name, ever three and ever one. Friends, let's worship God. Our opening hymn is the, the wonderful hymn that uh, 
we as Presbyterians love to sing 299, Holy, 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 let us praise God together. As always, at the beginning of our worship services, we come before God with our prayers of adoration, but also our prayers of confession, trusting that God, who hears our prayers, who hears our confessions, will also forgive us and restore us and grant us his peace. So please join me in prayer. God of mystery and mercy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we meet you in wonder as the Blessed Trinity. You are the Ancient of Days, eternal and unchanging, yet you are the source of each new day, renewing all things. In Christ, you encounter us in whatever each day brings with a heart that beats in love for us. Through the Spirit, you breathe life into what is growing older, energizing us to serve you in good times and hard times. In the mystery of the Trinity, you are always with us, and so we bring you our worship and praise to join in your dance of life and love, Holy One and Holy Three, now and evermore. Holy and healing God, slow to anger and swift to forgive, you have shown us the depth of your love day by day, yet we are reluctant to love others even a little. You've shown us compassion and forgiveness, yet we turn away from one another for even small slights. We save our concern for those most like us. Forgive us. Create in us clean hearts and a desire to begin again with you and with one another. Give us the courage to forgive each other and to know your healing grace. Friends, hear the good news. Remember the words of St. Paul, that from now on we regard no one from a human point of view. For if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. They are a new creation. Everything old has passed away, and see, everything has become new. Friends, thanks be to God that we can make a new start as a forgiven, redeemed, and restored people through God's gift of forgiveness and God's peace. Friends, may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us continue in our worship to God. Our praise song is, Our God.
Faith formation takes place in many different ways and in many different contexts. Faith formation takes place in our homes, in our faith communities, and through conversations. Conversations may take place on a walk, over a meal, or even through some form of technology, whether it be the phone, Zoom, Messenger, any of these other amazing forms of communication that allow us to stay connected even while apart. In our scripture passage today, we find Nicodemus, a respected teacher, visiting Jesus late one night with questions about faith. Nicodemus comes to Jesus with questions. Jesus answers those questions with poetic metaphors. But in our time with young Christians today, we're not going to focus on this text. Rather, we're going to provide you with a little insight into what we are presently doing to support the faith formation of our children and youth 
and include yet another example of Jesus using metaphors, symbolic language, to teach, to nurture faith formation. Good morning, everyone. My name is James, and today we have a very special guest host for Time with Young Christians. Welcome. My name is Jacqueline Cleland. I'm a past and future part-time planner for Richmond Presbyterian Church. And today I welcome you to our Time with Young Christians, or maybe the Young Christians at heart. One of the big focuses we've been looking at is creation and creation care. Our environment, our world, and stewardship are very important to us. And one of the big parts of creation we've been focusing on the past is water. Now, if you were a youth that attended our morning formation, you'll know that my favorite chemical is water, dihydride monoxide. And it's one of the amazing things that God gave us as well. When God was making the world, God gave us water. Water played a vital role in the splitting of the Red Sea to save the Israelites and the Egyptians. Water is vital not only to Vancouver for it to be a rainforest, but for the Bible and our lives as well. Now, here at Richmond, we like to be intergenerational and to be connected. So in our morning faith formation, as we focus on water, we also have an evening class. Now this evening class uses Minecraft for faith formation. And in our Minecraft faith formation, we're looking at exploring and working with the Bible to deepen our understanding in ways we haven't before. So our lovely attendees looked at the different parables. They focused on a water parable, the wise and foolish builder. And it makes us wonder how water, intergeneration, and wiseness and foolishness all connect together. We are going to be presenting the video that they filmed and created just for you. Now, as we watch this video, I want you to have a few thoughts in mind. How does water enter the picture? How would this parable be different without water? And are you a wise or foolish builder of your faith? Now, please enjoy the show. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Let's pray. God of wisdom, with the wind over your spirit, open our minds and hearts to receive your life-giving word through the scriptures. Energize us to follow Christ, your living word, whatever the Spirit moves us. Amen. Today's scripture reading is John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, We all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? 
exclaimed Nicodemus, How can an old man go back into the mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to a spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen and yet you don't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of a Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of a Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, it's just a joy to be with you 
Today, as we mark the 61st anniversary of Richmond Presbyterian Church, we celebrate the wonderful people who have worked so faithfully and so joyfully to first begin and then to support this congregation and its ministry over many, many years. But more importantly, friends, we celebrate the love of God, God's faithfulness to us, to God's people, as God's church for the past 61 years here at RPC, and we pray for many, many more years still to come. Many of you may have had a chance to watch the video that we posted on Facebook and on YouTube of a worship service that took place here at RPC in 1986. It was a worship service led by the Reverend Dr. Tony Plomp, and it was a wonderful service that was recorded back in June of 1986 during the Expo year here in Vancouver. Um, if you watch that video, it's wonderful to see Tony and many, many faces, many old faces that we remember. And we recognize that since 1986, in the intervening years, much has changed, but much has stayed the same, right? Faces are different, but the ministry, the mission of the church is still the same. It is to share the love of God in Jesus Christ with our community, and it is to work with God in the unveiling of the kingdom of God within our midst. Today's also Trinity Sunday. It's a Sunday when we mark a, a very, very important theological doctrine within the Christian church, that God is Trinity, that God is Trinitarian, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, now that might seem, well, somewhat irrelevant in this day and age, but hopefully we'll see how really important it is that God is Trinitarian, that God is Father, Son, and Spirit, and that this truth makes a big difference. In fact, it makes all the difference in the world. There's a story of a, of a woman who happened to be visiting Paris many years ago, and she came across the most wonderful painting which could be hers, she was told, for the bargain price of $150,000. Well, so she immediately sent a telegram to her husband in New York saying that she absolutely loved the painting and could she have it for her birthday. And the husband replied by asking that a telegram be sent to her in response, saying, no, comma, price too high. Well, the clerk at the Western Union made a tiny error in sending the reply. And what was sent to the woman was no price too high. There was no comma. So instead of no price too high, it was no price too high. The meaning was absolutely reversed for the lack of a comma. What a big difference a small thing can make. What a big difference a small thing can make. Now, I'm going to delve maybe into the obscure here, but I want you to stay with me. Back in 325 AD, the Emperor Constantine, the Roman Emperor, called together a church council at a place called Nicaea. And he called together all of the bishops, the leading bishops of the early Christian church. And they came together to, to debate the nature of Jesus. Now, some of the bishops there argued that Jesus was divine, but not exactly in the same way that God the Father was divine. They argued that God the Father was first, and that Jesus, while he was still divine, was the first creation of God the Father, perfect but not quite the same as God the Father. Other bishops, however, insisted that the Father and the Son were the same. Yes, they were different persons of the Trinity, but they were still the same, the same substance, that Jesus was begotten of the Father, not made by the Father. Still with me? The Council of Nicaea debated not whether Jesus was divine, but how. How was he divine? And in a way, it kind of boiled down to one letter, one letter of the alphabet, although the alphabet in this case would have been the Greek alphabet. Sometimes, as we see, a comma or the lack of it can change the meaning of an entire sentence. Well, at Nicaea, one letter, the Greek letter iota, from which we get the English letter I, one letter or the lack of it changed the course of civilization and all of history. 
There were many there who understood, who understood that Jesus was one, fully one with God the Father. God the Son and God the Father were the same. And they would have agreed with many of the passages in Scripture, such as in John's Gospel, when Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Or when Jesus declares that he is in the Father and that the Father is in him. Or that anyone who has seen him has seen the Father. But there were others for whom the idea of God being more than only God the Father was really, really difficult, impossible to accept. They charged that by making God the Son, Jesus, equal to God, that somehow it diluted God's nature, his absolute transcendence. And so they contended that God, Jesus, was not the same as God. Jesus was not the same as God, but was actually God's first act of creation. Jesus was divine, but not in the same way that the Father was divine. At some point, God the Father had created God the Son. And in the Greek, these two concepts boil down to two different words, which are differentiated only by one letter, by one iota. The first word is homo ousios. Homo meaning of the same, ousios meaning substance. Homo ousios, same substance. The other word is homoi ousios, with an I at the end. Homoi ousios means like substance, like substance, right? So Jesus was either homo ousios, of the same substance as God the Father, or he was homoi ousios, of like substance as the Father. Just one letter separating the two, just one iota, but so much of our Christian faith and Christian theology churns on whether this letter is in or whether this letter is out. Ultimately, the bishops that gathered at Nicaea voted overwhelmingly, almost unanimously, to say that Jesus was the same substance, homo ousios, as the Father. And the bishops issued a statement of belief called the Nicene Creed, which states so eloquently the results of the decision that they reached at Nicaea. In part, the creed reads, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. Now, did you stay with me through all of that? You might be asking yourself, so what? What difference does it make whether Jesus is of the same substance or of like substance as God the Father? Doesn't it all wash out the same in the end? Isn't it really nitpicking, like kind of asking how many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Well, today is Trinity Sunday. And the fact is that whether Jesus is God true God from true God, begotten, not made, or whether he is the first and greatest creation of God, it matters more than we might realize. The difference is, the difference is whether we have come to worship in Jesus Christ, a man, a great man, even a divine creation of God, or, there, or, or whether we've come to worship he who is God, God the Son, of the same substance as God the Father, and God the Spirit. It makes a big difference for us. It makes a big difference for us, just as it did for Nicodemus in our text from John's Gospel this morning. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a leader of the Jewish people, and he came to Jesus at night to speak with him in a way that makes you wonder, makes you believe that he had something in his heart, some stirring in his heart. He had questions. He came by night to see Jesus, a big risk for a man in his position, but he had a hunger which needed to be addressed. And the truth is, the truth is, my friends, that if Jesus was still just a great man, even if he was a creation of God, if he wasn't fully, wholly, completely God, then Nicodemus' needs and the needs of every person who hungers for the truth, for meaning, for understanding about who we are and why we are, it cannot be met in Jesus. It cannot be met in that Jesus. If Jesus is not truly God, one in being with the Father, 
then God in Jesus Christ, in the incarnation, did not fully, fully, wholly, completely enter into the world and take on our human form for our sakes. Do you follow? Even though God loves us so much, we know that we continue to fail in loving him or loving one another as we ought to love one another. The question isn't what will we do about that. The question is what will God do about it? But if Jesus isn't fully God, then what God did about it, what God did about it wouldn't be enough, right? Jesus couldn't be our savior. He couldn't save us if he wasn't fully, truly, holy, completely God, who fully God came to us and took on human form, lived our life, died on the cross, was raised from the dead, and offers us renewal and reconciliation, forgiveness, and eternal life. Our reading from the gospel states this, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So friends, if this is the central narrative of the Christian faith, that God so loved the world, that he chose to become one of us in Jesus Christ and lived and died on the cross and was resurrected to life from the dead to offer us salvation, eternal life, wholeness, renewal, reconciliation, then whether that Jesus was truly God, holy, fully, completely, or something a little less, well, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? It makes a huge difference. It makes all the difference in the world. All because of one letter. All because of one letter. Or in this case, the lack of it, right? All because of one letter because Jesus is God, holy and fully and completely. On dark nights, when we might wonder whether our life has any meaning or purpose, we can wonder instead about the height and the breadth and the depth of God's love for us, and we can know that we can never fall outside the outstretched arms of Christ. All because of one letter, because Jesus is God. On bright mornings when the world awakes and we open our eyes to a new day, when we hear the laughter of children, we feel the kiss of a spouse, we feel the touch of a hand of someone that we love. On such days when we know that life is good, and that life is a gift, we also know that Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, is the one who made all of this for us. Because Jesus is God, holy, fully, and completely, when we have our questions, when we have our doubts, when we fail and don't live up to our convictions, we can turn to Christ, whose words have the power to take away our sins, to forgive us, who brings out light, from darkness and who heals every human hurt because Christ is God holy fully completely when our hearts break for children who are starving hungry for people living in fear in war-torn places when we reach out to someone fighting an addiction or a friend facing a crumbling relationship we know that we're reaching out to Christ who said that whenever you do something like this for one of these sisters or brothers of mine, you also do it for me. Friends, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? Well, one letter, one letter makes all the difference in the world, all the difference in the world. On this Trinity Sunday, together with the historic, apostolic, spirit-led church, of Jesus Christ throughout the world, we gather together and confess together, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God, holy, fully, completely. He is the Holy One through whom all the galaxies and all the planets, all the oceans and all the mountains, canyons and plains were made, and yet he knows each one of us intimately. He knows our name. What difference does it make? Well, it makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? 61 years after Richmond Presbyterian Church was initially started, we still gather to worship, whether it's online as we do now, 
or whether, as we will very, very soon, my friends, very soon, my friends, whether we do it in person again, we still gather to worship Jesus. Not as a man, not even as a great man, not even as the firstborn creation of God the Father, but as fully, fully God, of the same nature, of the same substance as God the Father and God the Spirit. We gather to praise and worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three, all God equally God, eternally God. We'll never fully understand the mystery of the Trinity, but I think it's enough to know that we'll never be without the hope, joy, and love which are ours because God so loved the world. God so loved us that in Jesus, in Jesus of Nazareth, in Jesus the Christ, he has fully redeemed, restored, reconciled us to him, and saved us. Nicodemus didn't get it at first, but he got it eventually. He got it that because Jesus is the Messiah, that because Jesus is the Christ, that because Jesus would die and rise again, that in him his quest had found an answer. In him his hunger was satisfied. It made all the difference in the world for him. My friends, in our hunger, in our search, in our journey, we might not also get it initially, but I pray that we'll get it eventually, that we'll find our answer in Jesus, who is God, holy, fully, completely, and that we'll know that just as it did for Nicodemus and just like it did for the countless host who have gone before us, that it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference in the world for us. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us respond to God's word to us as we sing our song, our praise song, Shout to the Lord, Shout to the Lord.
Today's Trinity Sunday, and Trinity Sunday proclaims the outpouring, the outpouring of love within God's own being, for God's very nature is love. May our gifts offer an outpouring of our love for God and our willingness to put that love into action in God's world. Join me as we pray for our dedication of our offering and the prayers of thanksgiving and intercession to be followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. O God of overflowing love, receive our gifts as signs of our love and commitment to live for you. Bless our gifts and our lives that they may accomplish more than we can ask or imagine as we follow Jesus, equipped by the Spirit to serve you well and wisely. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare, with glory beyond our understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is endless, look upon us in your compassion. For peace that calms our hearts and saves our souls, and for peace in the whole world and throughout your creation, we pray to you, O Lord. For the stability of the church and for the unity of this congregation, for all who desire to follow you with faith and reverence, for all the ministries of your church around the world in these challenging times, we pray to you, O Christ for our leaders, our countries, for all those in public service, for this city, for every city and nation, for all those who offer themselves with diligence and compassion as the months of pandemic stretch on, we pray to you, O Spirit. We pray for the indigenous people of our land, for the nurturing of relationships between cultures and communities, for healing of old hurts, and for repentance and reconciliation, for new and better ways to walk with one another in respect and with care. We pray for the safety of those who must travel by land or by sea or by air, and for those who long to travel but cannot, and for all those who are separated from those whom they love. God, you who, are, who is Trinity, we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the isolated, for victims of violence, for refugees, for captives, and for our protection against all affliction, danger, and distress. To you, Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, belongs all glory, honor, and worship now and forever to the ages of ages. Hear us now as we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And friends, our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 298, Glory Be to God the Father. Let us praise God together.
brothers and sisters of Richmond Presbyterian Church congregation, people of God's church everywhere, on this Trinity Sunday, on this anniversary Sunday, I pray that we will be a people who will know that Jesus is God and that in him our hunger is satisfied, in him our quest finds its answer. May the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit always be the focus of our worship. And may we as God's people love the world God loves and the people that God loves as God loves us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of God the Spirit. Rest, remain, and abide with each of you and with all those whom you love, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.